Ramadan is a month of fasting and prayer. It brings us closer to Allah and each other. It brings us closer to Allah and each other. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah The Prophet of mankind, the peace of our hearts and mind The most generous and kind sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has stated The person closest to me on the day of judgment Will be the one who would have recited salat upon me abundantly in the world Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Alhamdulillah my dear viewers in this beautiful silsila of blessings of Ramadan Alhamdulillah in the last episode I discussed about the blessings of i'tikaf And inshallah in this episode I shall discuss about the Madani pearls regarding the masjid Now let's look at some of the Madani pearls regarding the masjid Number one According to a narration once a masjid headed towards the court of Allah to complain about the people engaging in worldly conversations inside it. Some angels met it on the way and said, We have been sent to ruin them. In other words, the people who engage in worldly conversations inside the masjid. Number two, it is narrated that the people who backbite and talk in the masjid, angels complain about them to Allah due to the foul smell. Backbiting is strictly haram and worse than even fornication. Number three, a tailor is not allowed to sew clothes in the masjid. However, he can do so if the basic purpose of his stay is to prevent children from entering the masjid and take care of the masjid. Similarly, a scribe, a writer cannot do paid work in the masjid. Number four, do not throw any form of rubbish inside the masjid. Sayyiduna Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Dihlwi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala has reported in Jazbul Qulub that even a very small particle, example a splinter etc, lying in the masjid causes as much pain to the masjid as a human feels pain when there is a small particle of something in his eye. Number five, spitting, blowing the nose, taking out dirt from the nose or ear and staining the masjid wall, floor, mat, carpet, and breaking pieces of the masjid's carpet or mat are all prohibited. Number six, there is no harm in blowing the nose with the handkerchief if necessary. Number seven, do not throw the masjid rubbish at such a place where it may be desecrated. Number eight, if you want to take your shoes with you in the masjid, take them off and dust them off outside before you enter. If there is dust on the soles of your feet, then wipe them off with something, like a handkerchief before entering the masjid. Number nine, after doing wudu, dry your feet properly in the wudu area. Walking inside the masjid with wet feet dirties the masjid floor and mats, etc. Number 10, running or stamping feet in the masjid is not allowed. Number 11, after doing wudu, do not let a single drop of water drip from your washed body parts onto the masjid floor. Remember, letting drops of water drip onto the masjid floor from washed body parts is prohibited. Number 12. Whenever you go from one part of the masjid to the other, for instance from the courtyard of the masjid to the inner portion or vice versa, place your right foot first. If the prayer mats are laid on the floor of the masjid, Step on them with your right foot first and also step off them onto the floor of the masjid with your right foot. In other words, whilst walking, step onto every mat with your right foot first. Likewise, when the khatib steps onto the mimbar, he should place his right foot on it first and he should also step off the mimbar with his right foot first. Number 13. If you sneeze or cough in a masjid, try to keep the voice as quiet as possible. 
the beloved and blessed prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam disliked the loud voice of sneeze in the masjid one should also avoid belching if it is not possible to stop belch one should keep the voice of the belch as quiet as possible whether or not he is in the masjid care should also be taken in this regard whilst one is present in an ijtima or a religious personality a hadith states a man belched in the presence of the holy prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said keep your belch away from us as those who fill their stomachs in the world will remain hungry for a long time in the hereafter number 17 breaking wind in the masjid is prohibited those who are not in i'tikaf are to go out if necessary therefore a mu'tikif should eat less food during i'tikaf and keep his stomach rather empty so that he will not have to break wind except at the time of defecation he will not be allowed to leave the masjid for this but he can go to the toilet area within the masjid boundaries number 18 stretching legs towards the qibla is prohibited everywhere and one should avoid doing so towards any direction in the masjid as it is quite inappropriate as such an honorable place one sayyiduna ibrahim bin adham rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi was sitting in the masjid alone he stretched his legs out suddenly he heard a voice from a corner of the masjid ibrahim should you sit in this manner in the court of kings he rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi immediately pulled his legs back and did not stretch them out again till his death take care even when rocking baby's children and putting them to sleep that their legs are not towards the qibla it is also important to keep this in mind whilst making them relieve themselves number 19 entering a masjid with used shoes on is the desecration of the masjid mawla of the believers sayyidatuna aisha siddiqa radhiyallahu ta'ala anha has narrated that the holy prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ordered that masajid be made up populous places and that they be kept clean and fragrant my dear viewers we have learned that building masajid and keeping them fragrant with pure and pleasant fragrance and incense sticks etc is an act of reward avoid lighting match sticks in the masjid because the smell of gunpowder and it is wajib to refrain from spreading such unpleasant smells in the masjid make sure that the smell of smoke does not enter the masjid Therefore burn the frankincense or incense sticks outside the masjid and then bring them inside. It is also important that the incense sticks be placed in a large tray or something similar so that its ashes do not fall onto the masjid floor. If there's an image of a human or animal on the packet of incense sticks, scratch it away. Do not spray masjid, your homes, cars, etc. with air freshness as their chemical substances spread into the air. and reach the lungs by inhalation and can cause harm according to a medical research the use of air fresheners could cause skin cancer for the viewers one should make a habit to eat less than one's appetite in other words stop eating while still hungry if a person eats in excess and gobbles down different things such as burgers pizzas ice cream cold drinks every now and then damaging his stomach and consequently suffering from the disease of bad breath He will get into an extremely difficult situation as entering the masjid with bad breath is haram. Entering the masjid even for offering salah with jamaat is also a sin in this state. As most people are not so much concerned about their afterlife nowadays, they seem to have become greedy for food. Further, the food culture has become popular everywhere and resulted in a number of people having bad breath. Many times Sometimes people have personally experienced that when someone comes to talk to them and when their mouth is close they have to hold their breath due to the person's bad breath sometimes even the imams and the muazzins have the problem of bad breath if it happens they should instantly take leaves and have treatment for it as entering the masjid with bad breath is haram unfortunately allah azza wa jalla forbid many people suffering from bad breath also do i'tikaf in the masjid in ramadan the number of people with bad breath increases due to stuffing themselves with fried and oily foods the best cure for this problem is to eat simple foods less than the appetite so that one does not have any digestive problems 
It is wajib to protect the masjid from all foul odors, including bad breath. It is stated in Fatawa Razawiya, volume 7, page 384. For a person to offer salah at home whilst having bad breath makes the salah makruh. And to go to the masjid in such a condition is haram. To cause distress to the people offering salah is haram. And even if there is no one in the masjid, it distresses the angels. It is stated in the hadith. Things that cause discomfort to humans also cause discomfort to the angels. Allah Ta'ala has stated, the one from whose body such bad smell emanates that troubles others. For instance, bad breath, bad smell from the armpits, or one who has applied sulfur to his body because of itching, or has applied any other bad smelling ointment or lotion should not be allowed to enter the masjid. Radish, onion, garlic, and every bad smelling thing should not be eaten before going to the masjid, as it is impermissible to enter the masjid whilst having a bad smell from the hands and the mouth, etc. Because it troubles the angels. It is stated in a hadith that the beloved and blessed Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam has said, whoever has eaten onion, garlic or leek, should not come near our masjid. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has further said, if he wants to eat it, he should remove the smell by cooking it. Allama Mawlana Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali Azmi rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi has stated, it is not permissible to eat uncooked garlic and onion in the masjid or before going to the masjid if the smell exists. This ruling applies to everything which has a bad smell, example leek, radish, uncooked meat, kerosene oil, the matchstick which produces a bad smell when struck, breaking wind, etc. The one suffering from bad breath, bad smelling wound, or uses medicine which has a bad smell is not permitted to enter the masjid until the smell is removed. The beloved and blessed Prophet وسلم, has said, save masajid from children, the insane, sale and purchase, quarrels, raising voices, enforcing penalties, and drawing swords. It is haram to bring such a child into the masjid that may make the masjid floor impure by urinating, etc. Bringing an insane person into the masjid is also haram. If there is no fear of impurity, then it is makruh. People who take their slippers into the masjid should clean off any impurity beforehand. Walking into the masjid wearing shoes is the disrespect of the masjid. By Sharia, it is not allowed to bring small children, the insane, into the masjid even for spiritual remedies. A baby cannot be brought into the masjid even if wrapped properly into a piece of clothing, etc. If you have ever made the mistake of bringing such children into the masjid, repent instantly and make a firm intention of not doing it again. However, it is permissible to bring children into the Finaya masjid for example, the Imam's room, provided one does not have to pass through the actual part of the masjid. I pray to Allah Azawajal, that He gives us all the ability that we take great care of the masajid and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He enables all of us to be clean when going to the masajid. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Ramadan is a month of fasting and prayer. It brings us closer to Allah and each other. It brings us closer to Allah and each other.